Hello and welcome to the Merle and Locke podcast. I'm Merle. And I'm Locke. Set sail and low expectations for everything nerd, accompanied by a healthy, albeit shameful helping, of pointless banter, lack of focus, and questionably acquired knowledge. Now to start us off, Locke, the subject I want to get into today is something that we're both very familiar with. Uh Uh, So it is our thoughts on MMOs and and what like how we feel about MMOs and 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 what they have to offer. I well I'll preface this with I'll never forget the first time that I really started getting into MMOs. I mean that started probably more with World of Warcraft than anything. Yeah, I I feel like a lot of people get their start with World of Warcraft. There, there were so many advertisements at the time that World of Warcraft that had kind of reached my attention between the commercials, especially the ones with Mr. T. Yeah, yeah. Him as his Mohawk warrior. <laughs> <laughs> and like that, that grabbed my attention. And then South Park kind of poked their little bit of fun at World of Warcraft. Yeah, still love that episode. And it, it just made me go, oh, I kind of want to play that. <laughs> and, so that was somewhere between Classic and Burning Crusade that a lot of that was happening. So I was just there, just at the end of Vanilla, and right at the beginning of Burning Crusade. Oh, I thought you started playing... Uh, with the the Lich King expansion. That's when I really started playing. That's when I got really hev- heavily addicted to uh, it. Ah, okay. Because I just thought it was cool. I loved the coloration. I loved the whole concept of the Wrath of the Lich King. I'll never forget seeing Sinjurgosa flying up ahead above the Lich King when he steps off the throne. Uh, for the for the trailer, uh, I loved it. It was great. So I mean, that really opened up a can of worms. Oh yeah, it opened up my experience into the MMO world and how it was for a kid at the time. Because I mean, like people weren't really ones to help you out. Not really. You would have your occasional people who would help you. I loved those people. They were great. Yeah, those. Those were the days when, like, guilds and stuff were, like, super exclusive. Right. You know? It was yep. hard to get into a guild. Yep. Especially a good one. Oh, yeah. I um, mean, yeah. and I found this group, they were really helpful in Wrath of the Lich King. Because a lot of people, if you failed, like, if, if you messed up even once, they're like, kick them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, you stood no chance. Uh, yeah. unless you could talk your way out of it. And I was, I was really not big on typing really fast. That's still, I'm not a super fast typer. So for them to be like, give us a reason why we shouldn't kick you. And if I couldn't like type up an answer real quick, it was like, you failed. Get out. Oh man. Um, oh, that's the worst. But this one team had really helped me out. They, they sent me a IP address to get into their uh, Ventrilo so that I could at least listen to them and I could communicate with them if I wanted to, but I was a kid, so it was one of those things where if you did that, you opened yourself up to random people on the internet and they'd find out you're a kid and some people were just like, I don't want to play with a kid. Yeah, I mean, I feel like nowadays, uh, like like back back then, like in uh, the days of, you know, teenage or early twenties, I suppose, playing those MMOs, like getting into a guild was was the dream, like getting into a good good guild. But nowadays, when I play MMOs, I don't care. <laughs> I don't, I don't care to be, you know, part of a big guild or anything. It's it's not 
uh, I don't know, May, like maybe it'd be fun, but I feel like it takes, like I, I, I feel like socializing in that respect takes, takes a lot of effort for me personally. That's, that's just my feelings on it. Because if like socializing with you know good friends that you have that I have like that's that's no effort whatsoever that's that's fun but then socializing with people who are acquaintances or maybe just a little bit more than acquaintances it's kind of draining you know because at that at that stage with with myself at least I'm still somewhat wearing of like putting on a face right you know i'm not i'm not truly myself because i'm trying to still trying to like get a gauge on what they what they find uh, i don't know offensive or, mm -hmm. or or like what they're into or what the because i i don't i don't want to get called out on anything or you right. know, or put down or patronized for certain views I have or, or morals or whatever it may be. I can't have those, you know, intimate conversations yet. Right. So, so yeah, I've, I find that, find that somewhat draining. So avoiding <sighs> guilds is well, sort of my thing nowadays. So you and I have, have our own guild, right? We do. You know? Yeah. Uh, guild masters of our own so even though we've we've been looking for people but it's mostly been we, we're looking for people who we know who we can trust first and before we start branching out getting more people involved it is a lot of work to be able to put in these schedules to be like hey we're gonna do guild uh guild runs uh this day this day and this day like picking out days for everybody to be able to join. I, I definitely get the appeal of that, being able to create create a community uh, around Absolutely. something. And, and I mean, having a guild really helps accomplish that. I mean, I would love to do more with that and more community aspect things in a guild, but I just don't have the time to do it. Which is why I get whenever we were first getting into WoW, it was with a lot of older people who did have more free time. And they would set up, you know, guild days to be like Tuesdays and Saturdays or Tuesdays and Fridays. And I was just like, I'm in school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> like all these days that you guys are picking are usually days where I can't, I can't, you're going down a path that I cannot follow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially if you're like, if you're not in the same time zone, right, and stuff like that, that creates uh, some difficulties, right. But I mean, if you think about like the bigger the guild, the more possibilities there are, yeah, right. Because yeah, I mean, if you have at least members who can hold a stance of like uh, our overseers, right? So our overseers would be able to help out. Uh, if they are in different time zones, they can set something up for each individual group in those time zones and split us up up in the in the sections to work with each other. I mean, I, I would find that to be great. I I love MMOs for that. Uh, the World of Warcraft, as far as what I experience anymore, does not have that same uh, sense of community. Especially ever since they did introductions to just LFRs and stuff, where you just get randomly thrown into a group. You don't really meet and get to know people. Yeah, I've 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 tagged along on quite a few of those, and 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 I've talked to people within them, mm -hmm. and just like getting an idea of like if we were waiting for if we were still queued up and we were waiting for folk, uh, we would sit there and chat back and forth and compliment each other on our, I don't know, like cosmetics or, or talk about what roles we're playing and, and what we might need help with or what bosses we haven't challenged before. If we want to get a rundown of those bosses and their mechanics. And, but at the end of the day, after it's done, everybody just pops out and we never right. see each other again. Yeah. It's not, there's nothing, there's, 
there's not enough time to really get to know these people. So it, it doesn't like it, it's it's nice being able to get those achievements or, or get those get those drops that you're looking for or complete quests and things like that. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't it doesn't accomplish, you know, the whole making new friends. That's I, don't know, I, I find that I find that hard to do in those games especially if you're just trying to randomly jump into like the the world chat you know mm -hmm. there's have you ever <laughs> i i uh, like i remember when i would just you, jump you on you mean randomly. trade chat right trade yeah trade chat <laughs> trade chat is no longer just for trading like hey you know i'm looking to it's, buy this they're like hey guess what no. political uh, Guess what politics are going on right now? Yeah, yep. like, cool. That's that's just amazing. Uh, <laughs> it's it's always awful, dude. Like every now now and again, I'll just I'll just like glance down in the lower corner of my screen just to see what's happening, and they're going off on something or another. Like it's such a stressful chat. <laughs> it, it's almost captivating though, right? So that, it, it is. That's a, you you get caught up and you look down and you're like. Oh Jesus! Like I, I can't believe we're talking about this, but at the same time, you're like, they are really going at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I love, I love when someone says something that's some someone that's correcting someone else for being abrasive in one way or another, and then that person that was doing the correcting mm. just gets completely shit on. <laughs> right. and that's always so funny to watch like i mean you know god god bless them for for trying to help these people these trolls i guess see see reason and and to question their 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 morals but mm -hmm. at the same time you're you're not going to accomplish anything here, bud. Mm -hmm. if, if you're just going to get completely humiliated by <laughs> I don't know how many people. I guess the bright side is like nobody knows who they are exactly, so they can go ahead and let out whatever feeling or let out their emotions to just get it off their chest. Um, yeah, that that anonymity, it's it, it helps a lot with op opening up a mm -hmm. bit. Yeah, ab absolutely. That's that's the case with most online gaming, or even uh, sometimes social media, because people make those dummy accounts sometimes just to troll. Do you recall uh, seeing, this is also in trade chat, a lot of this dumb stuff happens in trade chat. Do you ever see the people reading movie scripts, or writing out movie scripts? They're almost like bots. No, I never seen the movie. Oh scripts. yeah, it was once a. It usually happens right towards the end of an expansion. You really get to see it, but you'll see like characters with names that are close to character names of a movie, and then they're they're writing out into uh, like essentially reading out a script. Like so, come Christmas time, you might see characters like Grinch and Max and all these other names and they will just read along to a story. Oh. Oh, yeah. If you why? haven't seen it, then you... Why? I don't know. I, I, I'm That's guessing odd. out of boredom. <laughs> and the, the question <laughs> I've always had, I was like, they, they're almost like back to back to back. So it makes me wonder if they're just bots that that do this. Like somebody, for whatever reason, decided I'm going to make these accounts up, have them all online at the same time, sit in a city, and just talk on trade chat with each other, reading out the script of the movie. I mean, if it if it brings you some sort of pleasure, and it's it's very that's very that's very innocent you know that's it's very like innocent innocent pleasure that, that someone enjoys for whatever reason i can tell you 
Uh, yeah. But uh, I mean, more more power to him. Yeah. Yeah, I love I love in uh, World of Warcraft like I, I like speaking of the uh, the holidays. You know, I I always mm. love the holiday celebrations in MMOs. Those are always so much fun, man. <laughs> like it really it really puts you in the spirit. Like where these where the developers they take the time to like decorate and create events and things like that mm. and just it just creates this this really cool community and and that's that's what i really enjoy I, like mmos they, they have so much to offer it's mm-hmm. it's incredible uh whether it be like all the game mechanics and uh if you were to do like questing and follow this incredible story and you play a role within it or mm. if you do these challenging raids that that test your your patience. gaming <laughs> prowess okay and <laughs> well, yeah. yes absolutely <laughs> what else they got they got the crafting things they got they got gathering collecting if you want to collect uh, uh like cosmetics appearances mounts it, you could put you could sink so much time into it and it, and it's so enjoyable i was actually playing uh, a game last night called uh, called valheim it was me and two other buddies playing uh, one of the buddies was saying that he's glad he was glad that he actually had somebody to play with now because he he played it was playing it when it first came out but he was playing it solo because he had nobody to play it with and he was glad that we all started playing together because he was saying that while the game it's it's fun after you build like all these cool things and collect all these materials and this that and the other you you don't have anybody to share it with is so it falls short the 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 pleasure of of creating all those things and doing all these accomplishing all these things whereas with mmos you have countless people to to share it with and if you if you join a guild uh, other people will will support you and They'll, they'll appreciate it more like what what you've done what you've accomplished what you've collected and they'll and they'll express that so so the communities within mmos are what i really enjoy i i, I remember when i first started mmos I, I didn't i didn't actually get started in in world of warcraft i my first experience with it was a game called guild wars 2 which which it, it was a lot of fun i i played it i played it with my brother and we put we sunk some hours into it but i never did that much as I, I, I never got to experience the whole thing because i mean the the scope of mmos wasn't i i couldn't really wrap my head around it quite yet i was just do, doing some quests and collecting some things here and there but i was pretty much just bumbling my way around not knowing the scale of it all and then and then i got introduced to a game called i think it was called like wild star or something where it was it was kind of like a, a a futuristic thing with you know laser guns and and spaceships and stuff like that but it was it was an MMO and it, I had a lot of fun with that. But it was the same thing. Like I I didn't realize the entire scope of it. I uh, saw so I was just bumbling around doing some questing and whatnot. And like I I met some people here and there that I hung out with for a while and we showed each other our different bases that we build. And that that aspect was fun. That little bit of socializing there. Then I started dipping my toes into World of Warcraft. And once again, didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> and eventually I just got bored of it because I, I didn't I didn't realize everything I had to offer. I was always lost. <laughs> I didn't know where the heck I was, where I was going. And I tried World of Warcraft a few times. Like every time an expansion would come out, I would I would get the expansion, I would try again, and the same thing would happen. 
And then it was it wasn't until uh, Battle for Azeroth came out that me and you started playing together. Right. right? This is when we were living in my brother's basement <laughs> over yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for that for that short time. <laughs> Uh, and uh and we started hanging out and we said hey let's let's play some world of warcraft together yeah and man that was a great summer <laughs> that, like i had a ball with that e- even though it was battle for azeroth i remember i was sinking hours and hours into draenor uh-huh uh just because i was like I was like, I I know about this new shiny expansion is there, but I wanna I wanna go back a little bit and learn some things. I wanna and learn some the... things about. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I had, I had no idea. Like I, the I would, world, <laughs> I would give you so much shit for it too. Yeah, yeah, yep. you did. <laughs> so yeah, I played all the way through Draenor, then I played all the way through Legion, and then I started playing Battle for Azeroth. Mm-hmm. It was around the time that I was finishing up. I think I was start. I was starting to finish up BFA when Shadowlands came out. Yeah. 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 And then, and then I started actually playing the new expansion. You know. As I was supposed to. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so it took, took kinda me a while had, to get kinda there. Kind of had to try to drag you out. Yep, yep. Dragging you by out. your little door feet. Come on, let's go. <laughs> let's go do new content. Come on now. I'm not uh, ready. <laughs> but, but that was fun. We, we had a lot of fun with that. We were playing all the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, now, obviously... You getting your new job, and and being busy all the time. Mm-hmm. I kind of fell off with World of Warcraft for for the time being. Right. I mean, I'm I'm sure I'll be back. Mm-hmm. Just uh, just on a little hiatus playing playing some different games I could drop in and out of. Right. Because if I get back on World of Warcraft, then <laughs> stuck in it. That's it. Yeah, I'm stuck for a long time. <laughs> this, I mean, that's the thing about MMOs, right? So there's yeah. like so much to do. So you feel like you know, you you want to pick something, roll with it for a while, pick up something else, go for it for a while. Like, th- there's never truly a dull moment. I know people do get bored of it after a while because they feel like it's just the same stuff. And rep grinding is probably yeah I'll, I'll agree with that definitely boring feeling like you're just doing the same thing it's just daily quest after daily quest i i've always enjoyed the uh when i'm working on something right i'll i'll get stuck in and what i can't wait for is when all of our all of us get together and I get to show off what I've been working on. Right. You know? That's that's one of my favorite things. Or or I love the times where we would uh w- trying to like get together something as a as a, like a birthday present or something. Right. Yeah. I really enjoyed that a lot. Yeah. Uh because I was because my character was uh, an engineer and there was certain certain mounts that engineers could make and i would try to try to grind out a certain certain engineer levels to, in in one certain expansion to be able to craft that that mount and then gathering all the supplies for it would would take a while trying to farm all that stuff right uh, especially like the older mounts where it's it's difficult to buy that stuff from like the auction house mm-hmm. you know yeah which which for those of you who don't know what the auction house is it's where you can get essentially anything that's not like soul bound to your character and you can post it up and and sell it 
for however much money you want to sell it for. Like, there'll, there'll be other people posting most often like the same thing or, but the prices will be competitive. People will, will sell for lower than you so that their thing will, will sell faster and they'll be able to get rid of their thing. So like it's a competitive market to try to sell off your stuff. A lot of people, what they do is that they, like if they'll, they'll, they'll try and buy out everything of that product and then upsell it for ridiculous amounts and they'll make, so they make like these crazy profits off of it in the auction house. And a lot of people used to get their, their riches doing that and, uh, try, trying to corner the market for that, for that certain material, but it, it can't be something super niche because then you'll, it's, then you'll never sell it really. So it has to be something more often than not, it has to be something that people are com commonly farming for. Yeah. And that, that was, that was always interesting. Like I, I always tried to avoid the auction house as much as possible just because I know people were upselling things for ridiculous amounts. And I was like, yeah. I could just easily go go find like a loop somewhere of where I could farm that, that, that certain material. That's, that's the thing now, like so, some of the materials, uh, take forever to try to get. They do. Yeah. And I mean, the, the best stuff that you want to create always has the most rarest of materials, which is like maybe a 0 0.05 drop chance. I'm sorry, percent drop chance, but you know, it gets frustrating, especially those, uh, oh gosh, I remember those, what were those mounts we were making? I, I forget the name of the mount. It, it was some kind of, it was like a goblin, some kind of goblin oh, machinery yeah. from Pandaria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it is the, uh, but it's a, a goblin harvester mount, essentially. No, 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 not, not the goblin harvester, no, not which we, we can, we can get to that, but I was talking oh, about right, the, right. the rocket. It was like, uh, oh, yes, rocket yes. Or something like that. And there, it required this certain ore. Was it, that wasn't you it to the, go uh, ghost iron ore along with like trillium ore? Is it, was it trillium? No, no, no. It was the orange one. Ky the orange ore. Ky Kyperite or. Ky Kyperite. Something like that. I can't remember. But I remember farming for that took forever because they like, they never spawned. Mm -hmm. And it was always just like ghosts the ghost ore or whatever it was right and in, instead so like when it would when the ore would respawn it would either be the ghost iron or or the the kuiper pyrite or whatever it was but but yeah that took so long to, to farm out all of that because of the, the spawn rate of it i, I never did tell you <laughs> this is where you're going to uh really give give me hell for it is i came across then in pandaria uh a vendor that you sell a specific uh currency to and they give you kyperite or what yep yep are you for real i'm for real yeah oh my god <laughs> Uh. <laughs> yeah so now oh. you know uh i mean it's done okay. now but <laughs> yeah yeah well <laughs> the time has passed i well actually i don't have that mount for my character yet so right. i because like i made it for you for your birthday and i made it for your nephew's birthday yeah and i never made myself one yeah, you got so Jane. I have you, to. you got Jane Doe too. So oh, Jane Doe. Yeah, got got to get Jane Doe eventually. I don't think we, I've ever made her a birthday mount. I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, because she started playing less and less with right. us when right. we started doing that. I think she she says she's yeah. she's been in the mood for uh, some slow tour lately. Oh, uh, gosh. So, yeah, for for people who don't know Swotor, so we got Star Wars: The Old Republic, which is another MMO that I was going to end up talking about. <laughs> so now's a good time to get into that. 
I don't know how I came across SWOTOR, honestly. I can't remember if it was a commercial I had seen on TV once upon a time, or I was just searching online and, you know, came across something that had to do with Star Wars, and I immediately, loving Star Wars as much as I do, was captivated. <laughs> I was like, I, I, I have to play this. Like, you're, you're telling me that this is like World of Warcraft, which that's how I associated MMOs, was this is World of Warcraft, but Star Wars, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> now, so a tour was one that I, I enjoyed at first, but I don't know. I, I, uh, I, I guess I just wasn't feeling it eventually. Hmm. Yeah, it just didn't, it just didn't hold me, hold me in it. I don't know what it was about it. That was the one game where I started creating like character backstories for myself just to have fun with it. Like my good characters and my bad characters. And I'd be like, this one's only in search of power. This one, you know, had a bad incident that happened to them, which led them down the path that they were at. Like, oh, I got super into it. I still will enjoy playing the game. And that's one of the ones where you don't always have to have other people with you, but when you're doing like these really difficult like dungeons, they they can prove to be pretty challenging for just one person. Uh, another one is that I play a lot nowadays is ESO, Elder Scrolls Online. Yeah, yeah, and that's. That's one I really enjoy. That's one that, like, oh, man, that I could just get absolutely lost in because I love the the, the art style of it and the, the survivability, you know? Because cause you get these... You get the... You can make these builds, right, where you can survive really well. Like you could just you could just as easily like mess it up and and get get ganked constantly, <laughs> but uh, if if you're if you're pretty competent with with making builds, you could, there's a lot of survivability that you could accomplish with with your with your character, and and I love I love trying to accomplish that and being able to take on world bosses like by myself. And it's a it's a lot of fun. It's really satisfying. Like the, just the the combat of ESO is what I enjoy most. Like in any MMO that I've played, the combat in ESO has been the most satisfying for me. And and I love the uh, I do love the the voice acting that it has voice acting for every single quest that you do there's they have voice actors for it and they they don't have that in uh in world of warcraft which i mean we've we've had a lot of fun admittedly doing our own voices yeah yeah because we would do our our own voice acting for (laughs) world of warcraft which always we always got a good laugh out of but they they also have voice actors for swotor so like it's not always just this bland you know, read a quest and and go do okay so if if you were to list off let's let's list off our top mmos okay so we got we got world of warcraft we got elder scrolls online we have some tour is there any others i know that i ended up playing uh there was like a dungeons and dragons one that was on xbox that i played oh, never, the never winter never winter I yeah, did, never went to. I did play that for a little bit. Um, I I played that like for a very short amount of time. Yeah, I, it really didn't take me long. I was like, this this is no different than a lot of other games that I play. Yeah, um, yeah. So it just did not uh, take hold for me as much as I love Dungeons and Dragons and I love MMOs. Yeah, there there are there are more, but our our top okay, so our top three would definitely have to be World of Warcraft, Elder Scrolls Online, 
and SWOTOR. Right. Yeah? Yeah. So if, if we were to focus on those three, what are your favorite aspects? Like, what, which, where do does each one excel the most for you personally? I'm going to start it out with Star Wars. But that one excels in the going back and telling of the High Republic. Like, a lot of the hidden stuff, like, you have to play it for a while, and it really feeds you some more Star Wars history, in a way. And I enjoy okay, so that. You, so you like the, the lore the most in SWOTOR? Oh, absolutely. Okay, so so if I were to go through, SWOTOR is kind of kind of off my list, because, I mean, I'm not the biggest Star Wars nerd, so so it it never really caught on for me but if i were to compare world of warcraft and elder scrolls so i already stated elder scrolls combat combat is top tier for me in elder scrolls i absolutely love it and for world of warcraft i would say the whole collection aspect for me is like collection from like all kinds of collecting, like whether it be cosmetics or mounts mounts or, or crafting all those things that's, that's top tier for me. I love that aspect of, of world of Warcraft. So if you were to say your, your top bit of world of Warcraft, what would it be? Would it be, I guess because of the fact that they have the achievement, I uh, like I'm oh achievements yeah. I've always been even though some of the achievements don't get you anything other than points just to be like yeah I got more achievement points than you because for some reason thanks to me having a PlayStation back in the days was like they had a whole achievement system Xbox didn't pick up on that until like not the point systems they did have achievements but I don't think they really had a point system until later. Gamer score or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I I would try to 100% complete things on my PlayStation. I don't think I'll ever 100% my achievements for World of Warcraft. Yeah, definitely not. Uh, No. (laughs) That's a lot. That's a lot right there. I'll be dead before that ever happens. (laughs) Yep, yep. Uh, just the the scale of World of, World of Warcraft is crazy. Hmm. Yeah, as far as uh, collecting achievements for everything, it's madness. The thing that I'll say about ESO, like I do like some of the some of the things that the other games haven't introduced. Like when I saw the Elder Scrolls introduce lycanthropes and vampires i was like ooh, like that'd be interesting and like a buddy of mine said uh, ends up turning me into a werewolf then taking me to this ritual site and turning me into a uh, a werewolf i was like this is fun and which is something i don't have much experience in myself <laughs> and i i realized like i could be really beefy playing as the werewolf along with can't remember what i think i was a nord something i know it was mainly like a a melee dps type of thing but like i enjoyed that but it's not i put that third on my list i I guess because i didn't really play much of uh elder scrolls of anything else like oblivion world of warcraft has that sentimental spot and then Star Wars has me for the Star Wars nerd that I am. <laughs> yeah. All right. I love it. Okay. We got our ranking system. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on the Marlin Off podcast. If you enjoyed this banter, please consider becoming a patron by going to patreon.com slash Merle and Locke or simply follow the link in the description. Thank you.